While the country collectively mourns the tragedy in Newtown, Connecticut, how to respond to it is a harder and more divisive issue and something The Fold will spend much of this week discussing. John Lott is the author of More Guns, Less Crime and one of the few gun rights advocates speaking publicly this week. So we're happy to uh, be able to talk to you, John. Uh, I know it's been a busy few days for you. Uh, and you've been involved in some contentious interviews. I hope this isn't one of them. We just want to give you a chance to kind of air you know, your side of this debate. And I think it should start um, with the book and the theory from that book, Why Do More Guns Lead to Less Crime? Right. Well, thanks. I appreciate you having me on. I mean, this is a difficult time for everybody here. And I think everybody's always concerned about the same end result. What can we do? to try to save lives. People just disagree on what might be the effect, most effective way to try to do that. You know, the argument in More Guns, Less Crime is just as you can deter criminals with higher arrest rates or higher conviction rates or longer prison sentences, the fact that would-be victims might be able to defend themselves can also deter criminals from committing crimes. I mean, I suppose the simplest way to think about this is, let's say, uh, some violent criminal, would, God forbid, was stalking you or your family. Would you feel safer putting a sign in front of your home that said this home is a gun-free zone? You've made this argument and brought up this point that many, if not nearly all, of these mass shootings happen in places where guns are not allowed. And I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, what you're suggesting is that people are choosing these places because they know their would-be victims are less likely to be able to retaliate with firearms. Is that correct? Right. I mean, there are two things. One is it's clearly not random. Uh, since at least 1950, uh, if you look at all the multiple victim public shootings in the United States, as well as in Europe, with only one exception, uh, all the attacks in which more than three people have been killed have all occurred where guns are banned. If there is a problem, what is your prescription for solving this problem? What two or three things would you do? to make it better if restricting gun ownership isn't the answer? Um, two things. One, I guess I'd appreciate if the media at least, like, I, when I write pieces, I try, unless an editor tells me I have to mention their names, I don't mention their names in the pieces. Um, but beyond that, I would like to see us finally get rid of these gun-free zones that we have. You know, at some point, if you have 60 years or more of these cases, because I haven't gone back before 1950. But if you have 60 years of these cases, and, and we've had a lot of multiple victim public shootings, and, and all but one is in places where guns are banned, you've gone past any possibility of randomness explaining this. Beyond these gun-free zones, there, there's the issue of what should be legal to carry and what shouldn't. And I assume your disagreement is just where to draw the line. I assume you wouldn't want, you know, machine guns or, or rocket launchers allowed. Where do you draw that yeah, very, not, where do you draw that very difficult line then? Well, I'm not, I'm not advocating people be able to walk around with machine guns or, or rocket launchers, but I wouldn't renew the assault weapons ban. There's no evidence that I know of uh, by economists or criminologists that show that when it's sunset in 2004, that murder or violent crimes increased. And there's no evidence uh, that I've seen that shows that it fell uh, faster than it would have otherwise when uh, it was put in place to begin with. Are there any guns that are today banned that should be legal, or any guns that today are legal that should be banned? I think, I think it's, as far as the bans go, I'm pretty happy with the general bans. Look, here's my view on the world. I'm an empirical guy. I can't go and talk about guns that haven't been legal yet because I have no data on them. As an empirical guy, is there anywhere you part company with the NRA and think they're either not representing the data correctly or suggesting policies that aren't in the interest of the common good? I don't. Look, I understand people caring about freedom. But as I say, it's not what my motivation is. My motivation is safety. So when I hear them making an argument about, uh, uh, you know, certain guns should be allowed for freedom. That's not what I, I you know, I'm not going to yell at them or anything because they're doing it. But it's not, to me, the ultimate question is, what's the data show? Fair enough. Although, last thing, I'm not hearing what guns you're saying the data supports getting rid of. Okay, well, what I can, okay. 
I can only look at the laws that we've had, all right? And we've had a couple different types of laws. We've had D.C. and Chicago ban handguns, for example. Uh, what I found there is that you saw big increases in violent crime when that happened. So that's bad. I can tell you that's bad. But it's not just D.C. and Chicago. It's around the world. I can't find a place around the world, even island nations, that would be considered kind of the ideal test case where there's been a ban on all handguns or a ban on all guns where you've seen murder rates fall. John Locke coming to us from Philadelphia tonight. Thanks for sharing your views. Thank you very much for your time.